feasibility, yeah, facility feasibility committee to order. First up to approve the, is to approve the minutes of March 22nd. Move to approve. Your motion? Second. And a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I abstain. Okay, one abstain. I'm sorry. Okay. And anyways. I was in present. I five zero one one abstain. Um, next up is to review the revised plan for the ministry. plans one's a variation of, of the first one um, so what we looked at was uh, number one moving the fuel island out of the front middle there to try to free up that space um, just a quick side note there's, there's sort of what looks like maybe a curb dividing two areas of circulation in the center it's not necessarily a curb could be a stripe we're just trying to divide the circulation and I can explain kind of how that works there okay. um, so we've moved the, the salt shed a bit more forward. I didn't print numerous copies, but we did do uh, a number of truck turning radius tests on these, uh, including um, you know the, the big sewer truck to make sure that we can get in there and back in. Um, so those all work. Um, so we've obviously had to expand a bit uh, the pavement in the back to accommodate the circulation around the fuel island. Um, we kind of rearranged the, the new construction a little bit to accommodate a possible expansion of the vehicle garage towards the street. Um, that allowed us to keep at least one full pull, pull through maintenance bay at the back and then the pull through wash bay as well, even if we ended up expanding that building. Um, again, this keeps the existing building and uh, uh, but it depends on cost, how much work you actually do to it. You could just use it as is. The first intent, at least. Uh, again, salt shed up near the front there. Uh, everything is within all the setbacks. We're staying out mm -hmm. of the riverfront, with the exception of the little bit of sliver kind of uh, in the, the uh, yeah, southwest corner here that's already disturbed area. So that would have to be permitted, but I can't imagine it would be a problem just because it's already a disturbed area. <clears throat> um, so this, the variation of this is the second page. It's basically swapping the fuel island and the salt shed. The idea being that because all town vehicles use the fuel island, it made a little more sense to get it towards the front so they're not driving through the DPW yard to get there. There's not enough space to fit the salt shed in the same area, so we had to push it back. So that does impede growth of the sewer plant, if, if that is an issue. Um, could potentially move the salt shed further uh, east if the plant needed to, if, if we thought the plant needed to expand, so maybe that could give that some extra room. Obviously, we still want to try to stay out of that uh, buffer zone in the back there, though. Um, so it, it is, for the salt shed, it would be, you know, sort of, sort of uh, circulation around the entire site for salt loading and then out past the fuel island. But again, this gives kind of a little bit of separate circulation around the fuel island for other town vehicles to come and go. Uh, and similarly, we did truck turning radius uh, tests for this. Um, you know, the, the costs for both of these are uh, similar. There's obviously a little bit more pavement and site work on the second one because of this location of the salt shed. Um, but I think given the overall cost is probably not a big difference. The salt shed would still be open to the public, so the, the the salt shed is not open to the public. We just have that little resident you have a little shed or something? Little bunker thing that yeah. Yeah, so we yeah. could find a spot for that. So. Yeah. I mean 
Mr. Berg is on his way in. Obviously, this is for your call, but the, the layman's point of view, it would look, make sense to have the fuel island, which is used all year round, right. to be more accessible than the salt shed, which is, right. you know, used actually a little less and less these days. Yeah. Right. Right. But are you worried about the salt shed being right close to the... Can we burn that at all? Or? I don't know. Being it, close to what, Wally? Huh? Being close to what? To the buffer? Yeah. Uh, as long as it's managed and it's not in the buffer, it's not a problem. I mean, in fact, typically those permitting agencies are much happier to see it in a shed so that it's not just draining off in a pile outside, right? So there are ways, you know, we can make sure that it's raised and that we're, you know, all the, the storm drainage is, is catching any runoff from that property. Mm -hmm. And it's not running directly in there. So uh, yeah, we could burn that. that. Yeah. Pitch it. Yeah. Well, I agree with Andy's point of view that from a layman's perspective, it makes sense to have the fuel island closer to the road, but we, we, we should defer to the DPW experts mm -hmm. to see what they think. That's why I asked if the shed was for public, because it wouldn't be bad to have it there, but if it's not, they would have the fuel if we, they agree. Yeah, yeah. We just, like I said, we just have that little bunker. <clears throat> For the resident sand pile, sand pile. yeah, yeah we try to keep it. It's a little shed, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, basically what it is. The, the sludge truck that goes into the backs into the wastewater, that? That, is that a semi or just a ten wheel? Semi. 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 Yeah. That's yeah. the only. Yeah. I mean, I'm wondering if we still got enough room to. So I yeah, I didn't you weren't here when I explained. Uh, so we were we did truck turning radius. So you got more room with the, with the fuel island closer to the road yeah, than here's the salt shed here's there. The yeah, yeah. yeah. It, looks, it just looks out of proportion. Yeah. I think that's all. Like the semi could come in here. Right. Yeah, they usually they pull in. Yeah. That's, that's, okay, the that's the route they, they use now. Right, right. correct. Yeah. So it wouldn't really change much. Yeah. Yeah. Which would they come in here? They drive in around. Behind the existing building, right? Well. South of it. South of the existing building. Yeah. Turn around, pull up. Oh, back towards right. and then back in. Right. Oh, they got plenty of room. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and to Randy's point, there's, there's more room with the. It seems like there's more room with the uh, fuel, fuel island, island fuel closer island. than mm -hmm. the salt right. shed. Yeah, there. and the mm -hmm. fuel island, don't forget, is that the, the, the larger fuel? square is, is the concrete pad, so that's drivable. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. okay. Right. The tank so, is the right. small. They're not. The they don't have tank. to go around the. Correct. Right. And does the fuel island is it going to have canopy? A canopy. It, I believe that we're showing that in the costing at the moment. Okay. Either way, it would be high enough. Yeah. It would have to be high enough. 14 cents. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And, yeah. and, and the, the fuel island could get pushed a little farther, closer to the road, for that matter. Uh, potentially, yeah. yeah if, if it got to be right. sure. yeah. too tight yeah, there. Yeah, there's nothing sacred. Now, the, what, the fuel island, the tanks are above ground there? Correct. Okay. Yeah, Gary said it's going to be harder for you to get fuel. It sounds like you're in agreement that the fuel island out front is where we want to go after. I think. Yes. Scott? Is this Mr. DPW guy? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. It, it, both have their pros and cons, I guess, you know, obviously. One being with the fuel island in the rear or over here it's a little bit closer for say a police cruiser coming through for a light bulb or something where the shop is they can fill up while they're there. yeah kind of mm -hmm. thing but like i said it's 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 here it's a here nor there uh thing i guess either way uh that that'd be the only thing like little maintenance things obviously people are gonna have to go from you know most of the time, the only thing they really come in would be like window wash. Yeah, but like I said, yeah, it's like Very I said, it's a here or there thing, yeah, so. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah I, I I think the salt shit out back is better. Yeah. It's it's uh, I, out of sight, out of mind. I've got I a think. question for everybody here. And this has been an issue down there all along. This, this whole area should be fenced in, in my opinion. Mm hmm That's normally the case. Uh, very often the case. Yeah. Do you have? I mean, we have kids. We have. You know, there's been kids that slide down those sand piles in the summer, just uh -huh. laying the sand. They slide down in the winter. Well, you've got a grader <laughs> parked from me to Andy away, and if you get going, you're going to take the blade right in your face. 
you know, they dirt ride dirt bikes and stuff out there. I mean, it's just something that eventually is, you know, the sewer plant's fenced in, so you can't fall in there unless you can climb it. But, yeah. you know, there are stuff, there is stuff there that could come back to bite the town if somebody got hurt. I mean, you could post all the signs you want, but you know how that works. Right. It's no fun being a kid anymore, is it? I know, they take all the fun right out. <laughs> Am I going to hit that greater blade or not? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is a little difficult only because you know, you can see how many in and out streets. Right. So I mean, yeah. Is, we're sort of taking advantage of the street a little bit of circulation here. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess all of a sudden, I guess you could put cameras off. up. Yeah. Do you signage. To, yeah. Are you thinking of fencing along the road too? Or I was, I was, well, I, when you're talking about kids, I was thinking you're fencing the back side. Well, the back, the back sides would be a good start. Mm -hmm. And then you could put your, some cameras, which we probably would have anyways, on the buildings, obviously. And that way, you're controlling who's going in. I mean, we've had people, not only kids, but you get people to drive out back and dump their brush off and their trash off illegally, use the dumpster. Cameras are pretty cheap nowadays. Yeah, yeah they're sure. good too. The ones here are really good. And is this, do these designs account for uh, snow storage? Not specifically, but once we get into more detailed design, it's going to work. Okay. <clears throat> I think we're all in agreement on kind of 3B is the one we'd like to go after. Now, question. Carolyn's not here. I'm familiar with the process when you go after like a municipal school. What's the process for this? Um, do, you, can you, do you know and can you explain? Mm, only to a limited extent. I mean, okay. it, it, as, as far as determining, I, there are several ways I think a town can determine like, exactly how much they need to get. One would be to uh, get a design to a certain point, get a pretty good estimate, and then uh, go to a town meeting and procure the money. How that happens, I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. about me. Um, another option is to bring it almost to bidding and get a more detailed estimate. Third option is to put it out to bid, get an actual contractor to bid on it, and then go appropriate money after that point. That's sort of a little riskier, but it, that's been done fairly often as well. Okay. Um, you know, obviously, whatever process we would do, cost estimates along the process, so we know we're on track or where mm -hmm. we're at for yeah. sure. The, uh, I mean, what what is Carolyn? Does she want to put this whole thing out? Is one that project? That was what I don't. That was what I don't. I, that she's not here for so I'd like to get the attention. I mean, me like she does because I was kind of under the impression she was looking to go out for the next step for like a design. Mm -hmm. Get a design. Go, go for money. That was say, whatever some amount of money would be. Get a get a get a good get a detailed design. Get a good detailed estimate and then go back to town meeting for the for the big pot of money and then go out to bid. I, I, so I don't know how much that's going to cost the first part. What do you, I mean, ballpark estimate, what are you talking for? A good, like you said, good design. Uh, I guess it depends on how much detail we would get into. Because here's the problem. Yeah. When you bring up, you know, $30 million at the town meeting, that's going to some people, you better have the paramedics to figure it out. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few people that have a stroke. And then the problem is if you go so far and you know you're not going to get the money for a few more years, somebody's got to keep going back and updating that project as you right. go every time. Yeah. And at what point do we engage in OPM? Once you get the money to build. When you, uh, when, no, 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 no. When you start schematic design. Right, actually, because we, we did that with the one project, so you get somebody's at least who is familiar with this they scale of thing is helping to direct to make sure right, make what we get right. back is But at some point, legitimate. if you know, you know, like the elementary school, how many times, six times we did that, back and forth, you know, it's yeah. as, right, far as, as far as the design process, there are several iterations we can do. One is we've often done very short versions, so we're calling it partial schematic design, to kind of skirt that law a little bit so you don't have to hire an OPM. We get to we would have building plans and narratives for MEP systems, essentially. And that would give us at least a pretty good uh, uh, you know, cost estimate. It's not 
And it, it is a quantity to take off to some extent because we work with an estimator that knows these buildings well and knows our work. So he is able to take from a floor plan, you know, a, a, a quantity takeoff. It's not as detailed as, you know, construction documents. So that's one option. Another option is to go through, you know, full schematic design where we really get deep, more detailed plans, more detailed uh, MEP work, um, do site investigation. There's a whole other set of stuff to do that, um, and then get a full cost estimate. And that's you know, a little bit of a further step. In that case, yeah, by that point, you need to have an OPM on board. Now, is the OPM on this project, that's, that's a state mandate, is that correct? Correct. It can be a town employee. It does not have to be someone you hire outside, as long as they meet certain credentials. OK. I don't recall exactly what they are. I have to find out what those credentials you are. You would definitely meet it, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to do it. you got nothing to do, right. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, you don't want to do it. Do you want to get blamed for everything that right. goes south? <laughs> it, it can be a town engineer. You can also hire uh, an individual to act in that. You know, it could be a retired person that is, has construction experience. As long as they meet those credentials, it is yeah, possible. But, but does that go all the way? Of some sort? I'm not, I don't recall exactly what it is. They do have to have certain experience. They might have to either be a licensed contractor or a licensed architect or something. Is that through the building process too, or just this first part? It goes all the way through construction. All the way through to the end. All the way I thought you had to have an OPM for projects over a certain amount. We had, we yeah. had them for yeah. all three it's, of these. You have to over. Yeah. And I think that too, Gary. Just it, he's saying you can. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be an actually OPM. It doesn't have to be a firm. It can be okay. a person. You can hire a single person to do yeah, this. Person. Yeah. Somebody credentialed to fill that role. Correct. But that Correct. role, and I think the number used was lower, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when we were looking at these other projects. But I, I guess it's been it, like the one point two. I think is just underneath it. But I think one point four, one point five now. The, the trigger yeah. used to be yeah. up, so, uh, yeah. a lot lower than that. But yeah. you, you know, you get into that project, you need to have that to make sure you're meeting the DKM I mean, and all. The OPM that. we had, we had the same one for this building and. Fire station, uh -huh. and it worked out very well. Who was that? Okay, was that it? wasn't Larry, was it? No. no, no, no. Oh yeah, I remember the yeah. Okay. Anyway. What was his name? No, it's this kind Collier's, of Collier's. Collier's. Oh, okay. Collier's. Okay, we'll work with him. Yeah, I remember that. The one over there? Not so. I can remember that. No. no, but will this overlap with Russell School because they're talking awesome. about spending quite a bit of money on that too? The, uh, Russell School is. They're, they're spending don't. CPA money if it goes through. Yeah, that's got to go through the town meeting to be approved. But there's not, there's nowhere near enough CPA money to deal with Russell School. They're, if they, no. No, Russell School, that's just 1.3 million, and they have to come up with a. You have to, have to pay somebody to design what you want done. You can't just go by out the bid for what. The, 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 yeah, the current, the current article is my understanding is a stopgap measure for Russell School. The bigger project for Russell School would be ten years down the road to and probably bring it into yeah to bring it up to code and or change and or change use, but the immediate article is stopgap measures roof foundation point repointing yeah. is one other phase, but to just to uh, keep it from you know sinking imploding. into the ground yeah. further. <laughs> but the problem is they don't. There's no design. And you can't go out to bid without an architect and yeah. an engineer drawing up what needs to be done. So they're going to guarantee that 1.3 million dollars doesn't fall down anyway. Yeah. The uh, and it's from <clears throat> Russell School has is just basically a stone building. It is going to be earthquake resistant and hurricane resistant to a certain extent. And to do that, it needs to be steel reinforced. Right. If you 20, almost 30 years ago, the estimate to do that, because we're on the elementary school building committee, right. we looked at doing that. The estimate to do that 30 <coughs> years ago was just under $6 million. Mm -hmm. 30, 30 years 30 ago. Years. 30 years. We voted on that. You remember that. <laughs> The state would pay, was willing to pay half to fix both of those up. We had a vote on it. It's not like the first time this came up. And, it was, and we said they're not worth I, fixing. I we want a new building, and we I did. I could only guess what it would be today. The last estimate we had to really do that was about $40 million. That was before the coronavirus. It was, it's, 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 and no, sir. That's so, not the topic. No. <laughs> let's get, let's get on. So, but I mean, it's, it, it's certainly to the point that, yeah, it would be a competing, competing or adjunct project, but it really isn't related to this. You, you know, no. you know that it's out there, but this is its own thing. Yeah, right? this yeah. is. Um, I don't know what Carol's um, thinking is on doing this, 
the probably pros and cons to doing all, all kinds of different things. But the one thing that I really don't want to do is when we go to town meeting, <clears throat> it's happened almost every project, big project. You go to town meeting, you get money, you go back and get money, you go back and get it again. I really want to do this one time. I mean, get it approved, obviously, but I don't want to keep going back to the bank. Oh, we need some more, we need some more, we need some more. Um, that's just poor planning, in my two cents. Well, and that, and that to me, that's the point. You, and the more, the farther down the design road we go, mm -hmm. the more accurate our estimate is going to be. Right. Yeah. And it's a but, question: is how much do we pay up front to get to that level? Right. What level yeah. of accuracy are we comfortable going in with? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. And then, of course, if that you get to that point and you go to the vote for the money, yeah. now you're pushing it further and further out, which means you've got to go back and keep adjusting that. Right. Yeah, well, we do we, take into account escalation as best we can. Well, so, so, yeah. uh, <laughs> we, we have, have a 10-year year capital yes. plan. We haven't started on the right. first year yet, and it's been three years. So yeah. can you <laughs> forecast that far out? <laughs> we do usually forecast two or three years out. But I mean, it's, I mean it's it's as good as anybody's guess, right. To get it built. I mean, I mean these uh, well, are all yeah. The way, the way Carol was, Carolyn was talking to one of our meetings that the over the next, I think she says, two to three years, there's a decent amount of payments, mortgage, for lack of a better term, coming off for the town um, because some of the buildings are starting to get, you know, well, the schools, pay, the elementary schools paid for, I believe the um, Police station. For a safety complex that that is for. I think that was that was pretty much when we started these. That's what right. we talked about. Right. Um, there's a, there's, these have been up here for a couple of years. So in about two or three years, you're going to have a decent amount, a decent chunk taken off of these to won't be anywhere near enough to justify spending what's going to cost to put this DPW yard up. But again, I don't know what Carol's thinking is on this either, the Board of Selectmen. We haven't. It hasn't come before the select board yet. This is as far as it's gone, with, you know, Carolyn and, and this group, so that I'm aware of. You know, I mean, so. there's no doubt we need this. Um, from what a lot of people in town I've heard, talking to them, Sam, a lot of people in town realize we need to do something because mm -hmm. what we've got is barely adequate, yeah. and I do mean barely, um, and it's. It's, it's a tough over there. I mean, they're, they're, the people are working under not ideal conditions and leave it at that. Yeah. Now, town meeting seems to be changing in the spending the money for big stuff. They, they seem to be willing to spend money for the right causes. Right, right. And it's not just the people down there, it's the equipment. We've invested, you know, town's been good, we've got a lot of money for equipment. Oh, yeah, you know, you, you've got some. You know, yeah. and uh, <coughs> just leave part of that is getting the facility to keep it. Keep it nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, you, you take, your equipment when you get it lasts a long time because you take good care of it. And this will help prolong that. Right. Especially that little blue building in the lower right. Yep. Yes. You know, I mean, you start spending. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, look at what a, look at what a, even a six-wheel dump truck costs nowadays. Yeah, the new one's coming. The new ten-wheel is coming in. We're getting a ten-wheeler. What's that? Be, it'll be here next week, Monday. What well, kind? Much? What's that? What kind is it? The make is freight. Uh, Western Star. Western Star. Yes. How much? Three hundred and. Three hundred. Three hundred and sixty. I was going to guess two hundred and fifty. The single axle that we got appro or approved for in the last fall was three ten, or for a si single axle. Ten wheeler was three sixty. <laughs> so look at look at fire trucks. Is, look yeah. what fire trucks are, and I think they're two three years minimum out. Oh, yeah, they're, they're way out. That's coming up. Another one of those. The longer you wait, the more this escalates. You know. Oh, and it's yeah. not going up in. Well, that's just 1%, like one percent, two percent. No. And you're talking about those trucks or whatever. Some manufacturers won't guarantee the quote either. Really? Do the escalation Mac, Mac or, like yeah, Mac truck trucks. wouldn't guarantee really? anything. They're like, 
we could we're telling you 350 today on day of delivery that could be 400 we're just we we won't we don't hold the price that makes it good to budget wow yeah wow you're getting out of westfield yes western star is a good truck what kind of engine detroit diesel detroit still a two cycle no but back to four cycle they make four cycles now yep supposedly they have the least amount of emissions problems right now on, on the market. <laughs> There's nothing worse than salting and calling up. Hey, I'll be back in about 30 minutes while this truck regens down here yeah. at Rich's but Marina. Everyone has its pros and cons, I mean, you know, but. I was, okay, uh, I mean, it's been years since I've worked on a big rig. Yeah. But uh, I'm used to the old two cycle Detroits. Yep. Stalin so running yeah. reverse. <laughs> Don't laugh. I know somebody that took it happened to they, Garish. They, they took a truck apart, they took the engine apart, they put it back together, and they couldn't get it to run. And so they called us up. The owner went down to the place and they're running it, and looking at the engine, he says, How far did you take that apart? Tell me what you did. We did this and this and we does. He says, Okay, your cam's in up backwards. Oh, geez. Because on, a, on, a, on the old, in a, on the Detroit, just so you will know, it could go together. The Detroit diesel was used in most buses, but the engine was designed to run backwards. It's the only engine that could run backwards. It was just the way the engine was mounted in the, in a, in a, like a Peter Pan bus of one of those. So it runs backwards compared to like a semi. We, we had a guy who cares. He was backing in. He stalled it coming up over the lip into the garage, and it lugged and fired back up and was in reverse. He had it in reverse and the thing took off over. He just stopped, shut it off, and fired up again. So, Anyways, okay. Um, as an aside, I did talk to our water group and they put together some very quick numbers, uh, cost estimate numbers for doing that water line. Um, so we based it on 2,700 linear feet. Yeah. Uh, Sorry about that, no, by the way, okay. too, because no. I, I, I was measuring it with Gary, yeah. you know, uh, he was holding the wheel I was driving, oh, really? and then uh, I, I, I forever, he, I thought he said that, and then when you question it, and he said, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm here. I was started walking it. I'm like, ah, there's a, a screw up here on this, Gary, so we redid like, it. Said, and, no, it was 27. Oh, no. So, um, so a new 8-inch uh, duckle iron pipe. Um, so our guys are estimating at 345 a foot. So that's just under a million, so 900 and something thousand. But that doesn't include engineering services to do that, so it ends up being uh, about 1.3 million from his estimate. That also, there's obviously some caveats there. There is, there is a contingency in there of 25%, um, just because it's just a... And that's hydrants and service house services and all that. Correct, yes, yeah, it includes all that, yep. Um, Was that, did they quote that as steel pipe or plastic? Uh, so it ducked steel, the line. Oh, okay, I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't know where. Um, that's not, it's not a <laughs> for some reason yeah, I thought yeah. it was touch Be a little savings, we'd go with plastic. So. so, you know, yeah. what this doesn't include is it assumes, for example, that the soils are good yeah. and there's no issues there. It also assumes that we would keep the existing CA pipe in place. Yes. Yeah. What I understand, if you don't touch it, you can just leave it. Yes. There. You can abandon it. Right. So that it doesn't include yeah. any cost of moving. Is that an eight-inch pipe? Percent? Would it be an eight-inch, yeah. a new eight-inch pipe from that intersection down? Right. Um, that was, yeah. What'd you say that price for linear foot was? Three forty-five. Three forty-five. Three forty-five for just the pipe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that, I mean, that includes all the. That's the whole. Connections, yeah, and yeah, valves yeah. And hydrants and all that. Then engineering services and everything else adds a 10.3. So and a 25% contingency. There's a 25% contingency in that 1.3. Yeah. Just because unknown. <clears throat> so hopefully that's helpful. Um, these guys do this work all the time, so I'm assuming it's fairly accurate. But they, you know, they just looked at the sketch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay. All 
I uh, talked to them today up in Worcester. You guys had a booth at the water show. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> did you get any kind of a ballpark place on this puppy? Oh, I did, yes. Yeah. So um, I mentioned some numbers last week, our last meeting. I don't recall exactly how much detail I went into there, but these are. more. Thank you. So I listed three concepts. They, the, the numbers on the plans may be different a little bit, but I described what they were just to be clear sort of what we were looking at. The only one I put the detail in for is concept three because that's kind of what we're looking at today. Um, so you know, concept one was a full new building, demolish the existing full program. Uh, concept two was renovate the existing building, um, but with a reduced program. And then concept three, what we're looking at, is basically that reduced program. And the reduction is really just in the vehicle storage. So it's 12,000 instead of 16. What if we were to put the 16 on? Would you do that? I didn't, but I looked at it. I mean, it's about a million and a half or so in that range. Okay. Um, so this also assumes basically zero work in the existing building in order to get that cost a bit a little further down. <laughs> but um, it does uh, include removal of the existing fuel and a new fuel island, new salt shed. Um, that includes related site work. engineering, design, and a whole bit of that just construction. Uh, you'll see at the last page the construction number is there, and then the owner soft cost, which then includes engineering, is, is included in that final project number. Okay. So the construction cost in this case is a little over 22. And you said zero money into the existing building? In this scheme, correct. Yeah. I mean, technically now we, you can still utilize this back door. Right, to the yeah. existing shop that right. I feel was going to be there last night. I think just salt shop there, yeah. Just a TL, it, I mean, if we're going to do this project, would it make sense to put a little money in there for the TLC things that need to be done to well, that? Well, it should be repointed and, and yeah. painted, right. yeah. that kind of stuff. But Fixed major stuff. stuff is... Yeah, done, yeah. yeah Very see. little needs to be done. Yeah, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to be like, removing enough, you know, maybe leave the lift in there. Yeah. And, adding some shelving or something. Yeah. But. <clears throat> but this does include, you know, uh, the wash bay equipment includes, um, we made some assumptions about uh, maintenance equipment, which is that industrial equipment kind of in the middle of the second page there. You see that the items with the X's are the ones we've included. Uh, and again, the fuel system, above ground tanks. And again, this does include this does include a canopy in this scheme. It's about 100,000. How big is the bridge frame? Usually five tons. That's what we so, and, you know, there's. And that runs the width of the maintenance bays, or how does that run? Uh, typically, it varies. Um, typically, we want to at least cover oops, uh, a, couple, a couple of the. The, the bays and then be able to access the mezzanine with it too. You know, this does, we would assume some mezzanine storage above there as well. <clears throat> and so, you know, there are clever ways you can kind of package this and potentially save a little money, for instance. That's something we're doing in Marshfield. Uh, we, all, all the industrial equipment was basically an alternate in the bid. They chose not to take it, and they're kind of buying it a little bit of piecemeal, but they're able to buy it, you know, separately from the contract. In some cases, they were able to get some money, and they got the bridge crane in with the contract, so the contractor's installing that. But other, you know, in some cases, um, you know, they they did away with an overhead fluid distribution, for example, and did just roll around carts instead. Some say so. There's kind of clever ways we can break this up a little bit, but. That's um, something Gary and Scott can look at. And yeah, see that's what, what makes sense, what doesn't yeah. make sense for that stuff. Yeah, and again, you know, we, we haven't gone in detail exactly what equipment we need yet, so that's something we would do in the next phase. Sure. Okay. Um. 
And as I said, uh, on the last page, sort of above the soft cost, is that escalation and design contingency. Uh, so there is a pretty hefty design, and we're calling it kind of regional contingency, on the assumption that we're paying some sort of premium out here, and just the uncertainty of the design at this level. But then also there's two years of escalation in here. It's oh, so this is based on construction in 2025? Correct. Based on prevailing wage? Yes. So, yeah, 8%, 6%, those are our current industry guesses for inflation. Right. Certainly down from what it was, you know, even a year ago, which we, we had 11 and 14% or something. So, I think we're okay with that. Nice job. Good job. <laughs> Hope it's well, all clear. Well, we've been doing these a lot, so we have a really good database of these costs. We track uh, the bid costs. So, and we work. These are our own numbers, but we work with, cost, with our cost estimator to help us update the unit cost. We can as we The numbers are crazy, but it's <laughs> yeah. What's Quite the crazy. Most, what's the most common? And you got options for the lift for the yeah. truck lift. Are the I've seen them at shows and stuff. The column lifts more common, more popular the than the No, the uh, the mobile oh, column. The mobile yeah, yeah, yeah. They do seem to be more because they're so flexible. I yeah. guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it seems to be the personality of the maintenance department. Yeah. Department, right? What they like, what they're used to. Mm -hmm. Some guys are like, no, I only want this, and this, it has to be this company, which yeah. we also can't guarantee. Right, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> like I said, I've seen them at the shows, the, mo uh, the mobile column. They're lists, used quite know. a bit. Yeah. I, mean, I would say minimally, even if they have other lifts, they always have those mobile column lifts. Yeah. Yeah. How heavy can you get a lift like that? Oh, those, I mean, you can get, uh, I think, uh, you know, a set of six of them to lift over 100,000 pounds or something. Yeah, yeah you, they can they'll lift a, a, a fire branch in Houston. Yeah, no, they're amazing. And they're all integrated, so you just have one control station and they all go together. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Speaking from experience, I'm not a fan of the overhead fluid distribution and collection system. I like the, I like the cart that you mentioned much more, but that's just my preference. I wouldn't impose my two cents on you guys. What we have right here now is um, it was set up by um, LF Powers. It's got you know, your tanks for the bigger fluids. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, with a air with a feeder hose and a reel and you just pull over, you know, yeah, close to the cool. station. So it's like yeah, an overhead, yeah. but it's all in one spot. It's, yeah, it's they have low and you just it's, it's got a reel you can push either way through. It's, 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 The, that system to me is better than the overhead. Yeah. But again, like the uh, that yeah, it's again a bit of preference. Yes. Um, any other explanations here? Again, this assumes standard foundations. How thick is the standard foundation? Uh, it just means that it should be a standard spread footing, you know, whatever a two foot wide, foot deep, I mean, whatever it might be. But in other words, we're not having to do ground improvements or any other kind of soils okay. replacement. I'm assuming there's a level of reinforcement that we're after, and then whether or not we're eight inches or 12 inches or what have you. But yeah, that concrete just side. comes down to the design. It has to do more with the, it, it, we're assuming that it's sort of standard bearing, soils bearing. That's good soils. Yeah, the, the thickness of the wall isn't going to be a big deal because most of it's going to be buried, right. right? So the big deal is whether you could got pressure on the outside pushing on the inside. So I thought we were talking about floor. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, these, these are metal buildings, right? Yes. That's what this price is based on. Washington is poured floor, a lot of, you know. Is it Washington metal too? It is, yeah. We, all, we do the oh, yeah. steel in there, all fully galvanized. Oh, okay. Usually do like a plastic panel finish. Okay. Okay. How how high is the 
like on a standard construction like that, the concrete wall, you know, the base, is it four foot out of the ground? Uh, so like in the vehicle garage, or rather the storage area, we usually do like either a four or probably usually more a six foot high, just because plows hit it. Yes. And yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, the rest of the building typically is, is three or four feet. Okay. And then usually we have, you know, most typically we'll have masonry on the exterior of that yeah. as a finish, and then above that are the insulated panels. Uh, you know, one option that a lot of departments do is to go visit some some new uh, facilities. Um, so that might, you know, we could definitely arrange. Uh, the, the, con the, the concrete, five, six feet up, whatever it is, that's board concrete, not block. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Block's great when they get. Well, that's yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm Speaking from experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five thousand ways to easy want to go look at the <laughs> Um, but going to visit some new facilities is often really helpful because you kind of get a better impression about what this. I think that would like. I think that would be very helpful. Yes, yes. Get there. What's this closest to, in your opinion? What I heard. Uh, I haven't oh, heard anything uh, in a while. As far as size goes. Like, yes. Yeah. Concept. Um, um, blazing thing. Actually, off, one that just finished Holden. recently is in Holden. Yeah, that, Isn't that far? A site. There's uh, the biggest problem. Have a site. Um, we finished one not long ago, Longmeadow. Oh, yeah. uh, which is a little bit bigger, but you know it's a similar setup in a way. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, yeah, Amherst came to the grinding halt, but I never did it. Uh, for the moment, <laughs> I think it's still it's, looking for a place to put it. I think. I uh, thought they had some arrangement, but I'm not sure. I haven't heard from them. Uh, but so we could come up with a list, and and you know. We're in contact with most of those uh, administrations, so we could either arrange it or we could arrange ourselves in a way to So you'll send out a list of a few that you guys sure. don't have on? Yeah. Do you do any private price. construction? Uh, occasionally. <laughs> Not as much, for whatever reason, you know, because we're sort of in the municipal world. Hmm. Not so much. You know. just, these prices seem mind blowing. Uh, yeah. Well, part of it is the prevailing wage, for sure. And then, you know, the codes have changed a lot in the years, and the requirements we need to meet also raises costs a lot, too. Better for worse. I was just at the week or so ago at the legislation thing with the board members, and that were for the fire chiefs, and they did a one of the slides, I thought he took a picture of it, showed the comparison the last, I forget how many years, but showed the price of what they've gone up. Yeah. I can't remember. I don't yeah, want to shoot it up, but it's amazing. We have charts and graphs. How it's and increased. Yeah. Yeah, These yeah. buildings right now would be, the three we've just oh done here, God. we've I saved a lot by having them now. I hate yeah, to for see sure. what these three but, yeah. I hate to see what these and two if, would cost. Yet if it was to be done by yeah. a private entity, yeah. double anyhow. Oh. A lot less. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're you're better off to have a private entity bill at least right. you for you yep. yeah. Well, no, that's true. And, and like, like with with uh, Russell School, I mean, if a, if a private entity were to go for it, they could build it for a lot less, uh, yep. prepare for a lot less than what the municipality would. Right. I don't understand why that is. Prevailing wage. Prevailing wage. Prevailing wage has a big deal to do with it. Deacon. And the state is giving you money and they want you, basically, it's you're paying union costs. Well, plus, when you're working with a private owner and a private contractor, you can negotiate. You know, you can kind of say, "No, that should be this," and you can change things. You know, when it's a, when it's a public bid, you're defining what that is in the documents, and that's it. I mean, there's change orders after that, but you can't like negotiate it are, are down. You, from are, there. are you familiar with the public bidding process at all, Walter? No, but this, it, it just seems oh. insane. Okay, that, that has a lot to do with it, it because is. when you design something for the public. Let's, I'll use the elementary school. That was 30 years ago. It was the easiest way to compare. You get what you want for your base bid. And you go out to bid for the contractors, and they bid based on prevailing wage and everything else. And then you typically, to make sure that you come in under your bid, because if you exceed your bid, you've got to go all the way back to the beginning, and it's you're going to start the process almost all over again. So what you really want to do in many cases is, this is we, we absolutely need these things. These things we would really love to have, but if we can't afford them, we can 
make a deal called add alternates. So you just list your add alternates, one, two, three, however many That's you have. That's I was explaining, like the industrial equipment, for example. And number one is your most desired, what you need. So you can, they'll quote the base bid, okay, so let's say the base bid is 100 bucks. We have 150 for our, what we have to spend. Add alternate number one is 20 bucks. We can add number one. Number two is 100 bucks. But number three is 10 bucks. You can't pick number three. You have to pick number two. You absolutely have to add your add alternates in order of, of what you can do. So if two, three, if three, four, and five that's, are less than number one. Typical to Massachusetts. Typical to Massachusetts. You can't pick three, four, and five. You've got to go with number one. If you can't afford number one, you add nothing else. And people are happy with that? No, <laughs> no. absolutely not. But that, well, you know, that only is, is it like the, the prevailing state. wage is per hour. Yeah. It's also that guy, the guy doing the work, they have to pay his retirement. All his benefits are all based on the prevailing wage. He doesn't get the same, like, you know, because some of these guys don't, you know, like they'll do prevailing wage jobs in private. Oh, yeah. Almost all of them. Right. Our, elect our electricians right now, prevailing wage for an electrician is, I think it's around 130 bucks an hour. That's what we pay every time somebody comes there to do. Yeah, if I'm reading this right, I just looked it up, like, uh, Say an equipment operator, and if we're zone three, but don't hold me to this, their salary or their base pay is say 65 bucks an hour, never mind the markup for the profit margin of the company. So that's what the, the employees $65 an hour you're paying, where a private contract you'd be paying probably 30. Yeah. It, it, it's it, it, and it, you're absolutely right. We, are, we hate the, the bidding process, but the people in Boston and the... The I smart know, people, Jimmy. Uh, politi yeah, the smart groups, people. Political groups have so much twist on the uh, politicians that nobody's willing to go back to... Look, if you went to... I'm not sure. Vermont. Vermont does not have a prevailing wage. I'm almost positive. New York. I don't know. New York. Vermont, so New York it, there, there was one in Ohio. And, and Kim had brought something to the building committee. The, granted, this is a few years old now, but at one point he had, there was some information where the, the, it was roughly four times more expensive to build a municipal building in Massachusetts than it was in Ohio. And that was, wow. you know, half a decade ago. Yeah, wow. it, it, it's, it's, and then you get it to DCAM, which you know, this project is. But you've got to change yes. state law to you know, do that. And that means politicians have to stop getting <laughs> and the unions push with, a lot with, of with that different stuff things. Too. And it, it's they, they tried let me try to think. Approximately nineteen approximately nineteen eighty three or eighty four there was a ballot initiative to get rid of prevailing wage in Massachusetts. And it failed miserably. And the only reason I know that it was at that time because where I was working, I remember that there was a lot of the unions making a big noise about keeping the prevailing wage law. Well, at least you can rest assured that any workers working on this construction will be getting a living wage. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that, we can feel good about that. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, did you you had something on the agenda about North Hadley? Oh, that was we we originally. Um, John was going to take a quick look at what he had because he said that the North Hadley price he didn't have a good price on. He's like, rather not give it out. So I don't know if he updated your North. Remember, at our last meeting, we asked for the price on the Middle Street and North Hadley. He gave us a price in ballpark on oh. Middle Street, and you said, "I don't. I rather not give you the the one in North Hadley because I'm looking at it and I see some things I don't like. Mm. So I don't look at any, any new prices no, on it. But based on the resistance we would get to try to put it at North Hadley, I think it's going to be a waste of his time I agree. to yeah. even look at yeah. it. Okay, I agree. I just want to make sure we didn't. So if you, if you had it, great, but if you don't, no, don't no. waste your time. Okay. Was there an extension plan at all then for the North Hadley location? Like you guys had talked about, I know I, I missed the meeting, I was traveling, was, was there any discussion about uh, a remote depot, a salt depot or something like that? Is that still on the table no. or is it? The, the, no. We, one of the, one of the, one of the <coughs> several things happened between two meetings ago 
and now, and that was that um, everything appears to fit on this site. And talking to some of the direct abutters to the North Hadley site, they were, let's just say, very much opposed to putting a structure there. So if we tried to put something there, um, they have no problem with the fire station, they have no problem with it, but they said to put, I mean, this is essentially a construction yard, mm -hmm. 24 hours, 24 seven at times. They did not like the idea at all of living next to the construction yard. So we decided that let's see what we can do to concentrate on putting everything here because of the resistance we would run into if we tried to split the location between two. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely inefficient for the DPW to have this here and that there and to try to manage two sites. It's, 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 it's not impossible to do what if we can put them in one as the best of both of all the worlds. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's where I thought. I just, I just wanted to There was a possibility, it, too, over there with uh, National Heritage problems, too, correct? Yes, the, definitely. Uh, wetlands, et cetera, kind of thing over so there. Get some weird yeah. species in the yeah. back, oh, north, yeah. west. Spade toad yeah. frog, probably. Spade toad, spade foot toad. That spade toad frog, nobody's ever seen it, but they say that it's there. Yeah. I thought it was a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a unicorn. Yeah. Might as well be. Anyway, um, okay, so the. Uh, I guess the next thing is talk to, I'll talk to Carol, Carolyn, and see what she would recommend as far as which way we should, which path to try to get to our estimate and stuff. Well, like you, I want to avoid visit after visit. Yes. Oh, I, I, and so the question is, again, how far down that road do we go for design? I mean. In, like with, the, I think the, the, the school, they went out and it, or in other projects, we've hired the designer, got the money appropriated for that to come back with a very fleshed out uh, bid and a plan. And to me, it makes sense to have as much information, uh, you know, on the details so we don't have to do a change order or, uh, you know, miss out on a major piece. Obviously, there'd be little bits here and there, equipment and the like, but... Um, you know, my inclination would be to try to uh, get a, you know, the, the architect, the engineer, give us a real number, not some adjusted thing from, you know, right. uh, somebody else. We want the truth. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. not take the, the uh, Oak Bluffs plan and, and try to apply today's numbers on it. Yeah, that's, so the process, uh, I've never done this before, so we would have to go to town meeting to get money for the design process right. and, and determine how much we are willing to spend to get to a certain level. And I agree with you, Andy, that we should get it right to the, the, the penny if we can. Yeah. And then once we get there, then we go to town meeting and try to get money to build right. it. And there's also a step in between there that in Choosing an architect or an engineering firm to design this, we, we just can't automate. We have to go to bid. So. Correct. Yeah, that has to be. No, 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 no. Not bid. Well, no. Proposals. 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 We just can't choose these. Right. This, yeah. this company to do the rest of the Correct. work. We have to go out and bona fide interview Correct. firms to do this. Just like we had to do it for the OPM too. Right. Yes. 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 Both. Yeah. And are you allowed to write the scope of work? To go out to that bid, or how's we that? We can help with that. Can help with that. Yeah. It, 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 the, the, the state process is oh, you extremely <laughs> rigorous and also sometimes extremely strange. Yes. You can hire these, this company to do this without going anything special. They can tell us what it's going to cost to go to the next step, give us some prices on it. And then we go to the next step, and they can also bid on the next step and be interviewed for it. It's like, it's almost like it's a conflict of interest to me. But, but I mean, I understand, you know, they're, they're giving you a, a the company going to give you a decent estimate of what it's going to cost to do the next few steps. Um, 
once you choose, once we choose an architect, then they take over whoever it might be, give us whatever we might need, whatever depth we want to get into. And then, depending how, how in-depth it is, um, we go to town meeting, um, hopefully only once. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I'm very supportive of bringing in professional engineers and architects to get us the specs. Sure. No, I agree with that. It can only fine. be PEs yeah. and, and professional. You, you can't choose, uh, oh, I can draw. You're going to choose me. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't do that. Put the AutoCAD <laughs> down. Let's I'm, go. Right. I'm pretty good with CAD, Andy. <laughs> Put the AutoCAD yeah. down. Let's go. Just, just because I have AutoCAD doesn't mean I'm qualified. Because I'm not. We, we certainly have had municipalities do some of the actual construction work, which is a little different than what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, thinking about that actually, and in, in, uh, what comes in the back of my mind is West Hampton and their problems. They tried doing it there, and they're a small shop like us, and it uh -huh. did not work out well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely risky. Yeah. yeah. yeah you better, you better be able to handle whatever you take on for the yeah. municipality. Plus, work still needs to happen. Yeah, right. exactly. Right, that's what they. I think they ran yeah. into over there. Sure. They're trying to... Yeah. Yeah. The if foundation and then there's yeah. a yeah. problem. They're going to poor footing to year out plow and snow and dig in. Are you going to double your workforce? What's the point? You know? Right. <laughs> okay, so um, next meeting, I want to try for two weeks up tonight, see where I'll get information from Carol and talk, Carol and talk for. So two weeks is the 19th. I won't be here. This is like he's being that night. Yeah, that would be the 19th. 19th is not good for everybody? Not I'm good. good. You're no, good? I'm fine. So if I'm not here, somebody's just going to have to take minutes. Okay. Is it, how about for you? Most importantly, how was it for you? Good. Yes, I think. 4.19, 4.30 right here. Sound good? Yes, sir. Okay. Good for you all. That's fine. What's the weather? You recognize it. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sparrow has been good times. Yeah, you do. One day, four nights. If, if he was able to come up with a few uh, locations, are you guys interested in going as a group to look? I know, like, Wally's going to get busy doing his thing. Sooner and, is better than later. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, be, I'd be up for that. Yeah, I, I'd love to see some that are a similar size yeah. community yeah. or at least a similar logo, <laughs> similar program. Design, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can we fit in the, in the bed of a, the 10-wheeler or do oh, we yeah. get... Yeah. <laughs> Gary <laughs> said he was going to get the senior I'll bus for us. Senior to trick oh, out yeah. the tank of the Vactor for us. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that yeah. $360,000. Yeah. <laughs> Must have really nice seats. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, let me. I'll go through a map and see. Don't think you drive too far, but okay. Whatever we can decide. Okay. How yeah. far we're willing to go. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll give you a range. All right. Sounds good. Just built a garage and hopefully we're working across the street. When was Longmeadow started? How long ago was that one? Uh, let's see. I think it was finished in. It was finished right at the beginning of COVID, actually. So it would have been 2020, I guess. 20, finishing 20. Lucky guy, lucky people. Yeah. Well, they, lucky they, people. They, they almost got shut down, but the contractor somehow was able to keep working. Is, is a salt shed built any extra precautionary measures because it's got salt in it, or is it just a concrete enclosure with some walls? Um, well, yes and no. There's different types, though. There's the fabric type, and then there's the wood type. Um, Wood type, actually, and then, yes, there's ones with concrete foundations. We typically see either the fabric or the all wood. So in that case, it's, you know, all the metal connectors are, are epoxy coated or whatever. To yeah, I suppose the concrete will get torn to hell. Well, no, our yeah. what we have now is, is, is um, concrete. No, uh, with those extras? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the walls are starting to... And then it's wood. The wood. The that was one of those ones they built them everywhere. They yeah, the wood ones. Pieces. I mean, often what wood. they'll do is put on two layers of three quarter inch plywood, so you just replace the plywood eventually as, as an interior wall. There's no, even, no, there's no plywood. That's not a bad the, idea. Yeah, it's just the joists. I call it disposable. Yeah. Right. right exactly. Well, I think if we contain it and pitch it, you know, uh, they run off. Well, I'm just curious. I'm seeing you know five hundred thousand dollars to build it. <laughs> 
salt shed that just seems to Wally's point a little bit out there. <laughs> I'm Can afraid we put a floor drain actually. actually. Not no. At all. No? no. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yes, on a salt shed of that nature, I think we can figure it out. I don't know if you did the math, like standard height of just taking a loader, pushing up. How many ton can you can I, it hold? I can't. I have a calculator. I can figure it out. I don't know. The yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I can. I, yeah. Well, somebody. One, yeah, one of the salt shed guys the doors, sent me a calculator. Yeah. Okay. Excel. It's pretty how high are the entryway enough to pick up a trailer Typ dump? Typically, we try to get it so that yeah. We've had guys at Jeff Stars a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, fabric, the fabric the ones are really nice. Like Northampton has a right. nice one. Yeah, pretty new over there. They're they're a lot more modern. Yeah, I, think, I, I would I think, uh, recommend that. Monty, you were Turner's Falls. Yeah. yeah. Are you, Actually, are they you got a new DPW in Monty. Yeah. Are you that might be worth a shot. Back a semi in, raise it, and drive out. Yeah, yeah. 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 They right. we're trying doing that like at our thirty or forty feet yeah. all the way in. Okay. Your mm -hmm. what's the standard? So they don't they don't deliver. I'm assuming it's a standard semi dump trailer, not 50 foot three, or like a 40 something. They bring some pretty long ones because they're like. Try it. They'll haul back. Yeah, there. like some of those are. Some got three or four axles, like uh, some oh. of those big boule ones, because they're hauling you know trash or what have you. Oh yeah, yeah, they can. Yep, yeah. there's some pretty long trailers that come in. Yeah. Look at look at the look at the uh, forty forty eight so anyways. Go, 40, go, yeah. go, down, go down the mass pipe <laughs> and you these uh trash hauling trucks are fifty yeah. threes. Oh yeah. And they nice. have up to four axles on them. I'd like to see that thing turn around in somebody's yard. <laughs> well, I'd like to see the yard after they turn around. And yeah, yeah they, they come like that to us because they're like, they go out to New York State down below the trash and they backhaul back. all the salt. So you oh. never know what you're they getting for a truck. They're normally hauling, what, 33 tons? Yeah. One dump. Yeah, they're, 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 the first time I saw a 53 dump trailer, like, Oh, it's a 53 foot dump trailer? That thing was way a ton. You want to make sure you're level and on fairly good yeah. ground, too, when you start picking it up. You see how many axles are under it, it's like, well, no wonder, yeah. Watch the overhead wires. Okay, <laughs> um, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Media and history, thank you. Thank you, Abby Media.